Welcome back everyone to Kaiser Redux, I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover, and right now, we're at the end of the American Civil War because, well, that's my fifth time trying to record this little campaign. So, let's read about last America standing. It's, it's beginning to dawn upon our citizens that American Civil War is actually over. The scars from the fighting will last for a long time, but it seemed as if the feeling was already starting to sink in that any chance to change America's destiny further is past. We're now forevermore the American Union state, and the world should know that it is so. God, God bless America, and, and the American Civil War. He be long and his allies have triumphed over all their enemies. With this victory, we can now celebrate a new era of peace. Though there is much rebuilding to do, we shall make this time to celebrate our victory. I'll be honest here, man. This is one of the worst times I've ever had in my channel here. Grinding out almost basically until 1943. Um, I'll be honest, like, I hate the American Civil War. It turns in such a grind fest. So, but here's, let me explain what we did. So, um, at the end of the last video, we were fighting Mexico. And I was using our 40 combat with divisions. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. Just because the, Ameri the Mexican divisions were not very good. The biggest problem fighting in Mexico is the terrain itself. So, but it wasn't that bad of, of war. Really, I was surprised. That, you know, they went to war with all the American factions, but we took them out. And then I decided, you know what? We're not going to have a Rocky Mountain ceasefire. So I took these 40 combat with division and threw them at the PSA. And just the streets of Nevada and Oregon and California were running extremely red with blood. It was an extreme grind fest. And, but we took them out. And then I focused and put all of our soldiers on the East Coast, pushed into Pennsylvania, did a massive front line strike here against the Reds, the CAR, the American, uh, the USA, the federal government. And we actually beat the Reds once the federal government took out Philadelphia. They capitulated, which was fine. But then I kept grinding against the CAR and the USA, and eventually the CAR like, capitulated, even after we took out half of, the, they literally all they left was half of Florida, this little port of Florida, as well as Raleigh, North Carolina. And then they still wouldn't give up. They still wouldn't give up some, for some reason. And then, my God, MacArthur, the federal government was the last one for me to capitulate. Um, I, I don't know. Just, it, it, at this point, it's fighting MacArthur with his divisions, each division literally having over 100 or, division organization, made me almost rage quit this campaign. Because I hate the American Civil War. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I hate the American Civil War because it turns into an extreme grind fest. That ruins my enthusiasm for any campaign. This is probably the, the most I've ever raged in a campaign. Like, you don't see me raging. You, get, you you know, you can tell from my voice that I'm not happy with this, but you haven't seen the hours of me just raging. I'm ready to like, punch a hole in my wall because of the first... I don't know why. I just really don't know why that this... Every time I play the American Civil War, it turns into such a grind. Even after you guys recommended, we use planes, which I did use planes. I used enough fighters. We got enough tactical bombers going in. We had air superiority. We had 40 with combat divisions, and obviously, you can tell that our guys aren't very strong. Especially because I made all of our divisions 40 combat with infantry. Which means we have, like, no guns. <laughs> Look at that, no guns, no artillery, whatever. But, uh, like, air superiority, pretty okay divisions. They were still beating us. They were still beating us. They were, I, I, there's nothing I could have done anything else differently. I mean, I made sure that, you know, supply, you know, it's not very good down here. But, like, I think... I don't know. I, I just, I'm not going to do the American Civil War for a long time after this. I just hate it so much. So incredibly much. Because everything I did to win this war, basically by 1943, there's nothing else I could have done. There's literally nothing else. With air superiority, with good divisions, we just couldn't do anything. I just could not do anything. And just, I don't want to do this anymore. Or at least, you know, the American Civil War. It pisses me off way too much to get this done. So, um, other than that, we have... We, it's taking so long. I don't know, like, when you guys do the American Civil War, what do you guys do? Because we've already had an election in the American Union State. I couldn't even read these events for you because it took so long to win this stupid Civil War. You guys probably have better answers than I do to win the American Civil War because it's 1943. I hate this. I really do. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really, I really apologize for me just being disappointed and just, like, being a downer for this, but I've, I, I'm almost at the point of rage quitting this campaign because of how grindy this stupid Civil War is. Uh, but let's see what we have here. Uh, land bonus for doctrine, trials. Oh man, I'm. No one's gonna live against us at this point. But rebuilding the country. So we had another election. We could have gone with the Christian Party. We could have gone with the National Progressive Party. I really wish I showed you what we could have done here. As well as we could have gone with the Papua Donna Party. But oh, Philip Carroll the Regent has died. Death of Carol II. Like, oh, gunpowder. Oh boy. Currently ruling party's national populists. Hmm. Well, we gotta do the new Washington. Huey Long is done at populists who have been ensnared at or, at or even ignored since their birth in Kansas now reign supreme in the country. It is thanks to our new Washington, uh, Huey Long, that this could be achieved. With Long at the helm, nothing is beyond our reach. We shall overcome poverty to make America the nation always meant to be every man a king. Which is good. And then we'll do strike oil to the victor. 
wealth ceiling, commodity controls. Let's do rebuilding the country. A long struggle to push through the federal syndicals and ODP forces in America has left the victorious Union state economically drained. And mentally drained, too. The hand that unifies the country can either promote a deficit spending regime or an austerity program that limits direct intervention in the market. But now, oh, the end of the American Civil War. So please let me know in the comments below, guys. What do you guys do to win the American Civil War, especially as a Union state or even the CSA? Because I don't know how, but the federal government, like, their divisions weren't that great. They're like 20 combo with normal ones. Over 100 organization. They didn't have air superiority. They couldn't even bomb us. And I, I, I still kept losing. I still kept losing somehow. So, I don't know. I, just at least in my opinion, which is, I'm probably wrong about this. I still think the American Civil War could be looked at again because just parts of it, it's just not fun. It's just not fun. It's boring. It's grindy and kills enthusiasm, but the Central American Republic asks for protection. The CAR has put forth a request to our nation to protect it from the enemies who threaten the integrity and survival of the Republic. Accepting their request would ultimately lead to them joining our faction, however. Committing ourselves to their defense could upset the already fragilized balance of power of the region. Where's Central America again? No, they helped us out. They helped us actually go to war with Mexico, and I will guarantee their independence. They can help us enforce the Monroe Doctrine, but the Holy American League. With the end of hostilities in the continental U.S., the Catholic Volunteer Corps seeing a surge of popularity for the role in consolidating America under the Kingfish, have begun an effort to reorganize themselves and better able to continue to aid the American people in this new post-war era. To that end, the Corps commander, Philip Acosta Carroll, along with the high-profile cabal of devout Catholics, both famous and notorious from the American political theater, have announced the formation of the Holy American League, a nonprofit organization dedicated to Catholic Christian values of charity and diligence in the American spirit. Within this new coalition, Carroll and his militia have surrounded themselves with a posse of, uh, of uh, political elite. One of the more well-known figures in New York Governor Al Smith, a Brooklyn-born Democrat credited with a reputation as a venerable elder statesman and for his involvement in the construction of the Empire State Building. It's hoped that Smith's moderate reputation would help legitimize the League in the eyes of the Senate and Congress in addition to Smith. Among the founders of the League, most controversially, includes women's suffrage activist and known social sympathizer Dorothy Day, who is herself most known for her relationship with the likes of Bill, Big Bill Haywood, John Reed, and the SBA, all about enemies of Hugh long in the American Union state, and while Long has been comparatively lenient and allowing Day to continue to operate in the continental U.S., mostly due to her social tendencies, some of which fall in line with Long's own beliefs, the League has still garnered a great deal of public criticism for Day's history with the CSA. Day's involvement might explain the strange absence of the loudest and most obvious support of the American Catholics, and while Charles Coughlin himself was quite loud and ardent in his initial support of Carroll and the Volunteers, the alignment with Day has turned Coughlin, Coughlin into the League's most scathing critic. He has verbally ripped apart a League on his radio show, stating loudly that he will oppose any measure that seeks to uproot the state of American faith. First Smith, now Cochran, maybe they have a point. But I want to get through some uh, comments before we get too far, because sometimes I forget about reading comments. Uh, reclaim New England, Reclaim Alaska. Uh, I'm pretty much ready to go to war and just murder all the on-time members. But, so for this campaign, like I said, I'm, I'm almost done with it. Like mentally, I'm just, I'm exhausted from this campaign. You've not seen the hours of me raging at this, which is a kind of a good thing, but um, I'm going to kill every single on-time member. I'm going to kill every single person or every single nation in this game or in this, in this campaign, who has fought against me in the Civil War, because I'm going to burn every single city to the ground. But, comments. What difficulty state am I, am I playing on? I'm playing on normal difficulty. I'm not playing on easy. I'm not playing on hard. It's just normal difficulty, so... Truth be damned, I guess. And the second... Uh, Valkyrie is still going on. No one's winning against the Third International too much. But the Russians are winning against the Germans. Uh, someone recommends we try out Austria-Hungary and the End of New Beginning mod. Uh, let's see. Someone recommends we build infantry divisions before the war ends and rename them. So, that's kind of interesting. I didn't know about that. So, if you could re rename these divisions, do we lose them? Do we not lose them? Because I made everyone 40 combat width, and I actually renamed these divisions just in case. Like, 19 width combat width, or militia garbo, because militia divisions are just god-awful, and I'd never recommend using them. Uh, we actually have mounted AUS militias. Oh, they're probably doing garrison stuff, so. Um, so, yeah, these are literally all 40 combat width divisions. Literally all these guys, so. It is what it is. And, yeah, Walt Disney was leading the PSA for a while, so. But please let me know in the comments below, what do you guys do to win the American Civil War? Because I, I don't want to have this happen again. I really don't. But, alright, let's keep going on. And our request has been accepted. We've secured the guarantee that we've requested and are protected from the enemies of the Republic. Great. What? Okay. With the Civil War now at an end, we must heal the scars that have come from it. Let's give us a little bit more days, a few more days, just because I want to make sure that we can rebuild ourselves quickly enough. Oh boy, we're going to need a lot of things here. So let's cut down on the guns a little bit more. As much as I want to make more guns, we really do need to make more guns. We need to make sure we're making enough factories for everything else too. So, so it's going to take some time. But I have been rebuilding a lot of screen, like civilian factories, infrastructure, just to make sure, because I know at this point we're not going to have any sort of uh, <laughs> industry to do anything. So 
the Holy American League helped support. As a first step of the Holy American League's plan to aid in the reconstruction effort of the American Union State, uh, Philip Carroll, in a concert with Al Smith and Dorothy Day, began reestablishing human humanitarian camps or humanitarian aid camps throughout the eastern seaboard. From Baltimore to Miami to Baton Rouge, the volunteers under Carroll and the League have, are set about distributing food and water, providing medical aid, and setting up hospital camps. Furthermore, they've been conducting religious services and education for children cleared rubble in the Black Belt. Many African Americans have found themselves refuge, or found themselves uh, finding refuge within the Catholic volunteers. These volunteers tirelessly labored to heal and rebuild the black communities damaged by the war openly, forsaking and condemning the racial violence suffered by the black minority in the Jim Crow South and fully embracing the unity of black and white Americans in solidarity and brotherhood. As one might imagine, this sentiment was not re received well by the Dixiecrats of the Southern political elite, who protested Huey Long's leniency with the League's sphere of influence spreading so far south and west. Many of the critics were beginning to align with Gerald Smith and the Catholic presence in the South, and even Charles Coughlin. Despite his militant anti clan stance, can't help but look at the League's ex increasingly or increasing influence with African Americans without skepticism as to the validity of their intentions. Nonetheless, the efforts of the Holy American League have very much impressed Huey Long, who publicly praised the efforts of Philip Carroll and the League for helping to stitch America back together again. We will heal together, my brothers. Cool. Okay, can we get a fourth research slot? I hate having three research slots. It is 42, though. Basically 43, which... Man. Man, oh man. But I do appreciate you guys still, if you are still watching, I do appreciate you guys still sticking around. I do appreciate it, so... Um, as much as I want to take out, I mean, we're going to beat the crap out of these guys. I swear to God, we better beat the crap out of these guys, because we have, we should have enough planes for everything here. And actually, I deleted a lot of planes just because, plane management, I think it's still using overall from the Paradox devs. I wonder if they're ever actually going to really touch it again. And then again, the peace conferences in this game, they, I think they've remained pretty much the same since it began. Of course, I wasn't, I wasn't playing Hawaii 4 when it uh, released back in uh, 2016, so. Oh, look at that, that's not good. Um, supply-wise, not looking very good. Uh, if that's, a, if that's the case, you guys are here too, right? Come on, come on stupid event. Get out of the way. Uh, I'll put you guys down here, down the south, so we don't ruin supply too much. So, zealous Protestants class with Catholic converts. Ever since the founding of the Holy American League, they've done their best to provide aid to destitute Americans. Now, the League's militiamen and humanitarian workers have seen a huge increase in volunteers across America, with many New Englanders and African Americans in the Deep South flocking to the ranks of the League. Most importantly, the increase in popularity of the League also coincides with an increase in religious uh, conversions to Roman Catholicism throughout the American Union State, with many of the League's new volunteers often pledging themselves in a deeply pious and ceremonious fashion, in accordance with the Catholic doctrine. Some of them have taken oaths of abstinence, poverty, or chastity, all in adherence with their newfound faith. Inevitably, this was going to lead to a confrontation with the most conservative Protestant elements in America, now spurned on by General L.K. Smith's rhetoric. Increasingly frequent incidents of violence between the leagues most, and the most conservative Protestant population have been reported in the Deep South. Indeed, much of the Christian right in America are furious at what they see as encroachment against traditional American Christian values and claim that the presence of the League, whose who such groups decry as Papists, are part of the conspiracy enacted by the Vatican to purge the continental U.S. of all who refuse to submit to Papal authority. Through it all, the violent terroristic activity of the KKK has begun to wear, rear its ugly head once again. We must watch these groups, for they are preaching that the league's favoritism of the Negro population is an obvious ploy to usurp the authority of the white man, and already reports of vicious hate crimes and atrocities have begun to surface, some as far north as the Black Belt of Virginia. The situation appears to be rapidly aspiring out of control. Many former old guard Democrats and even influential Louisiana and Texas politicians are complaining to the Kingfish personally about what they see as the league's arbitration, and some members of the mill Minutemen are seen clash with uh, League's militiamen. All this presents a difficult dilemma to Huey Long, and as much as his supporters rely on the conservative Protestant farmers in the West and South, and as such, the crisis must be handled with delicacy and tact. In other news, Charles Cochran's weekly radio broadcasts have been postponed for undisclosed reasons. Get Smith in my office yesterday. With the American Legion appointment. With the end of the Civil War comes a vacancy in the ever-important position of the American League's national commander. This last title holder, a uh, smelly butter, foolishly decided with a syndicalist and he should be hanged. Whomever takes this position will symbolically represent the veterans of the U.S. military and society. Unless their choice is important. The most common name floated around is Terry... General Terry de la Mesa Ju Allen Jr. Although so, this would, he would need to be pressured into position given his hatred of bureaucracy, right-wing populists argue that Gerald L. K. Smith should be given the position as a show of his loyalty to activism and legion recruitment. Left-wing populists, on the other hand, seem to prefer the veteran Sid McMath, who should be appointed. Mm, increased influence of the left-wing populists. Well, technically, we do need national populists, so whoever we choose doesn't really matter to me. So, let's see... Hmm. I don't want either one because the left wing and right wing just don't like each other, so we'll go with him. He's got a lot of work to do. But I'm ready to spend my political power because we got a lot of no stability, but whatever. Alright. Oh god. Okay, so actually this one's really, really important. One thing I will say about these events, 
it's just a solid block of, of paragraph. Can we at least split it up so it looks a little bit less? So we, I don't know, just reading one solid block of a paragraph seems a bit daunting. And obviously we can read it. But, like, can we at least split it up into some, you know, smaller paragraphs? But with the current situation of the country becoming an ever more tenuous, a meeting was called today. President Huey Long, Field Marshal Jacob L. Devers, and conservative Christian leader Gerald Smith were called together in the midst of a storm of accusations, posturing, and finger-pointing as who did or did not want to do, do what. A solution arose to the issue of the Holy American League that seemed a far more extreme measure than Long had anticipated and yet. It might be one of the better options available to him. Smith proposed an anti-Catholic bill at the beginning of the means to counter the influence of the growing Catholic influence of the population. This measure would also help in artificially limiting their influence within American government. Smith remains ad adamant that the League's otis op modus operandi is to seize control of the American Union state and turn it into a puppet, lo a puppet loyal state uh, to no authority but the Holy See. While the Kingfisher was quick to dismiss Smith's ramblings, Devers' concerns about Carroll and the League are much more realistic. Devers does indeed argue that it's unlikely that a conspiracy by the Vatican is ongoing, however. He points out that Carroll himself, from an outside perspective, seems to be positioning himself as a potential leader for the Catholic minority further. He is also positioning himself as a voice of the minority rights of those oppressed largely by evangel evangelical oh my god evangelical Protestants in the nation, namely African Americans, combined with the alliance between Carol, Al Smith, and Dorothy Day, Devers postulates that it would be a powerful force. While maintaining that any sort of armed coup d'etat is unlikely, Philip Carroll is possibly positioning himself to run for president to unseat Huey Long in the next election. Furthermore, even though Devers claimed that the unrest in the South can be easily brought into line with some of the well placed peacekeeping forces, perhaps combined with Long applying pressure to convince Charles Coughlin to support the League to help foster better relations between the League and other Christian groups, it might also be in Long's interest, too, if Carroll's influence is indeed growing, to consider passing the anti Catholic bill to ensure a comfortable majority in the polls. Emergency message session in Congress, or get Coughlin on the horn and send some Minutemen out as well. Uh, let's see. So, okay, so this is one, like I said earlier, it's very, very important. So we can get the gunpowder plot. So basically, we have to ban them. Ban, ban, ban. Ooh, do, 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 do. Mm. Uh, we'll perhaps combine with the public pressure to keep support to help foster better relations. To if passing the bill. Yeah, so we want send some Minutemen out as well. I think we need to arrange an emergency session so that we can uh, pass the bill. So I think that's what we want. Obviously, if it doesn't go well and we don't get the coup, well, we'll have to come back and do redo it. So hopefully, the supplies aren't too bad around here. Then again, we are like still, you know, training exercise. The new gunpowder plot. Well, you want to look at that? I think we did it correctly. Uh, let's get some better carbines. Evening it fell upon the Capitol Hill, the towering white dome stark against the pitch black sky. Heavy rainfall swept across D.C. with a crack of thunder, heralding the dawn of a new era over the continental United States. A new era under the old order. Only a small contingent of military police sat outside the Capitol building, a small but unnecessary measure to ensure the safety of the Kingfish's entourage on arrival. Huey Long was president, and so was Gerald Smith. The purpose that night was to briefly oversee the deliberation over the new anti-Catholic bill being considered, arriving well ahead of the senators and congressmen to the Senate chambers. Despite the eerie emptiness of the building once inside, Long's inner circle was certain that the night would co conclude decisively. Their assumptions would be proven right. The last anyone saw the Kingfish in his cabinet was in Smith's office, where the three men sat laughing, joking, and drinking, except Smith, obviously. Cal Cavalier at the... At their impending success as they listened to the new broadcast of Charles Coughlin's radio show, and the first one in a long while, Father Coughlin, who spoke at, with his trademark tone of a parent speaking to his children, spoke of the impending bill that sought to curtail his faith and in doing so usurp the faith that defined not only his identity but that of a large and growing minority of the country, and despite this he spoke in a manner that was almost frighteningly calm. As the show for the night came to a close, the last words that came over the radio were, And my wrath shall wax hot, I shall kill you with a sword, and you will find that your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. The Capitol building of the U.S., the spitting image of American de democratic values, then erupted into an infernos crate after crate of high-grade explosive detonated in the sewers before low. Long, Connor Smith, and a scant number of the Minutemen would be incinerated in the blast when the former seat of the U.S. Congress or completely burnt to a cinder as the military police looked on, awestruck by morning tomorrow. Coalition forces both militiamen under the, or Minutemen, under the command of Father Charles Cochran and the Holy American League under the auspices of Philip Acosta Carroll will have seized control of the White House just as similar elements consolidated power in Atlanta, St. Louis, Houston, and New Orleans. By that afternoon, radio community keys from the, with, with Field Marshal's Devers would affirm the peaceful transition of command from the armed forces to the administration of the coalition government of Carroll and Cochran. And by evening, Philip Acosta Carroll would be sworn in as a new American president of the American Union State, remember, remember the 5th of November. Nice. <laughs> wow, they just blew up the Capitol building? Now look at that flag. The new gunpowder plot? Cool. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. And there's the rest of it. Nice. Things go boom. As we're still trying to rebuild the country, of course. 
uh, which I do want to get off done as fast as possible. Look at that. Catholic America, more daily political power. Country to continue to uh, recover from the Civil War, which is pretty good. Daily command power gain. An American monarchy? Whoa. With the providential rise of the Holy American League, the question of what the League's governmental reforms will entail have begun to manifest and beget begs the question. Could a monarch ever truly rule America again? Many people both at home and abroad have drawn correlations between the Holy American League and the various other integralist movements throughout the world, including the Fatherland Front and, Fa and Austrian integralist movements in Portugal and Brazil. All these movements contain similar values despite their vast cultural differences. The primary values in common are an ardent patriotic nationalism, a strong emphasis in Catholicism, and an intense antipathy for liberalism. Above all, the desire for social and cultural restructuring around old world virtues under the guiding hand of restored monarchy. The prospect of the American people accepting a return to monarchy is not, to put it mildly, hard to believe. And this would be ignoring the well known history of the origins of the American Revolution being against monarchical, monarchical, uh, monarchical tyranny. Between the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence in American history, it's begun to show that Americans do not look on strongly on strong men favorably. It is doubtful that Philip Carroll, given his faith and family lineage, would ever seek any kind of subservient accommodation with the Royalists who are north, certainly not after the debacle in mainland Britain. At the same time, however, Murray and MacArthur and Long have proved that the one man strong man can be another man's savior. To this end, the greatest minds and leadership of the Holy American League have gathered together in Congress at St. Mary's City, the birthplace of American Catholicism, to consider the future of America's political structure. Already, several proposals to maintain some form of republicanism or democracy have been rejected due to, as President Carroll aptly notes, republicanism being the spawn of a failed satanic ideology that was shown for what it truly was as the fires of the Valkyrie burned almost all liberal democracies in Europe. Only two of the seemingly endless proposals in the Congress have made any traction with the members of the Holy American League assembled there. The first and perhaps most radical of these proposals is indeed the restoration of a monarchy, but not under any temporal king, rather than the coronation and enthronement of Christ himself as King of America. While the proposal is indeed quite radical, it also makes the most sense from a Catholic standpoint. The universal kingship of Christ is a little-known teaching of the Catholic Church that says that all nations, regardless of creed, shall acknowledge the kingship. Thus, enthroning Christ as a King of America would simply be a recognition of what is already the case. The other proposals are getting attraction. It was also including the recreation of the monarchy, but under the House of Stuart, the royal house that has held the last Catholic king of America's mother country, England, within its grasp. This proposal, while also radical in its own right, would make sense in a both more grand geopolitical sense and a historic sense. It was well known that international enemy number one of President Carroll and the Holy League is an exiled British government based house in Canada. By crowning a historical rival to the House of Windsor, we will see this geopolitical situation as a reality uh, within the American government. Oh no, the original, uh, from a historical standpoint, the original gunpowder plot, the namesake for the strategy the modern league used to come to power, was a plot by British Catholics to destroy the houses of Parliament and restore the House of Stuart. Thus, by crowning a Stuart heir, we could finish what our brothers and faiths could not. As the first Congress of American Holy League begins voting on what the new form of government of, for the American people will be, it is clear that, that this needs to be broken up. <laughs> this text, I mean, look at this, it's, it's a huge thing of text. Please, if the devs are watching, for the love of God, break it up, break it up. Only Christ has a right to rule in America. We'll finish with the gunpowder plot started. Long leave the House of Stuart. The death of Carol II. Um, Second Congress. I, I I don't want to do that. I want. I think only Christ has a right to rule in America. I kind of want to do that one. Even though, with, long leave the House of Stuart. I really want to kill off the British. I don't care from where they are, Canada or the British Isles. I want to kill every single one of them for supporting our enemies. So, um. I think I want to say only Christ has a right to rule in America. I kind of like that one the most. So, if this is wrong, we might go back and choose something else, but... Cool. Uh, the Maccabi Plan. I want to go with Integral America so we can recover from the Civil War a little bit faster. The way of life in nations such as Portugal and the American Philip found that of tradition and decentralization that prevented evil from coming to power struck Philip as a true soul of a nation. Finally, with total control and the world to acting to gain by acting, Philip has begun to enact policies that make America more Catholic and decentralized Christ the King. And in an event that left many Americans dumbfounded today, President Philip Acosta Carroll, the father Charles Cockton, the Holy American League, led a joint declara declaration announcing the American Union State would indeed be transitioned to a form of constitutional monarchy. The astonishment of the majority of Americans counterintuitively did not stem from the concept of an Amer imperial miracle, but rather a declaration from Carol and Cochran that none other than Jesus of Nazareth, uh, otherwise known as Jesus Christ, should be coordinated as king of the American Union State, the fulcrum point of all political and religious power in the continental U.S. as it stands. This new um, political policy has shocked millions and millions who expected a president, chairman, or dictator, perhaps, but never a king. Further, in a similarly confounding statement, Philip Carroll announced that he would, in fact, be resigning as the president of the U.S. and said, assuming the more modest title of regent. 
This would be acting in accordance with the teachings of the church, primarily for the purpose of overseeing the administration of the new American Union state. Reactions to this declaration have been, to put it mildly, perhaps as varied and mixed as they have, have ever been in the former U.S. Many Americans, even those among the Christian faithful, are flabbergasted as the notion of the apparatus of state being granted to an ethereal being in the form of the Judaic Son of the God. Meanwhile, the markedly more outspokenly cynical critics of the Holy American League have openly denounced the move as a nakedly obvious and even delusional attempt to galvanize a religious population in America under the clerical dictatorship of Phil, uh, Philip Carroll. How in God's name Carol attempts to legitimize this seemingly insane decision remains to be seen. Best pray that it succeeds, for it will make a miracle. Look at that stability. Nice. Christ the King, more division, organization, defense, and attack. Oh, thank God. We have more attack. I'm ready to just burn everyone, all of our enemies. I'm just ready to burn, burn, burn. I'll be honest. Like, this is causing me a lot of frustration, even in my own life. Like, this, the Second American Civil War. Oof. Oh, look at that. We're the Serene Republic of the American Union State, led by handsome Philip. Like, ah. Click the portrait. Oh! We get to switch between the King and... Oh my goodness, Jesus Christ is here! Oh, look at that. Oh, no, everything's better. Everything's better. Okay. I'm okay now. We have Jesus Christ leading our country. That is... Wow. But the next watch. It was the humanity of the Catholic farmers, ranchers, and workers across the country. The humanity that had traditionally been denied to them in America that allowed for the Holy American League to start the hard, long process of rebuilding America and repairing the broken hearts and minds of its people. With the continued threat of the terrorism on the horizon, the American people are wary, and many Catholic converts have taken to forming citizens' guard to protect their poor rural communities from such opportunists. The irony of the situation was not lost on those they protected, as one might imagine. Much of the suffering of Catholic Americans can be traced to every Protestants or other groups work to protect. The rising popularity of these ad hoc militias, no Known to these rural communities as night watches might mark the beginning of real change in America, Catholic and Protestant whites have been more supportive of one another than ever before, and many communities in the Midwest and Great Plains have found a semblance of peace in the ashes of a once great nation. While it, stick some, while it will stick, till still take some work before America is restored to her previous glory, the role these night's men, or night's watchmen ha will, had to play will not be forgotten. They fought through heck, and now they pray for heaven. <sighs> At least we have some sort of stability. That's good. Still can't build jack squat, but, you know, whatever. Oh my god, how much more reading is there? The American Inquisition. This... <sighs> Devs, please break up the paragraphs. The time to come at last for the undoing of a great injustice on the American continent that traces itself back to the very foundation of the nation. For the centuries, the Catholic and Protestant population of America lived together in harmony, working side by side one another, turned one well, towards 13 colonies into the emerging preeminent global superpower we are today. We ourselves acknowledge that this duality, for it was bred into the very fabric of our nation from the moment Charles of Carrollton signed his name in the document that unleashed the United States upon the world, but that was when America was weak and America is now strong. The Protestants have finally seen the truth of this, and by God they've closed their hearts to the poison of Lutherite heresy and opened it to Christ Almighty. Here in our new America, a sanctuary to eclipse all sanctuaries. Yet still, there are those who rebuke our Lord and then, I'm sorry, but you can't. You, lowercase L? What? No, capital L. And it is a rebuke that shall not be ignored any longer. They are the evangelists, sick, demented old criminals who corrupt their fellow Christians in and archaic, obscene doctrines of racial superiority and moral decadence. There are also Baptists, Methodists, Episcopalians, Quakers, Puritans, Mormons, and more. All the blight attain a corrosion to the perfect, incandescent American spirit, and we demand compensation for this insult by order of the Philip Regent. Uh, Regent Philip Acosta Carroll, like Cortez before him, we shall conduct the first American Inquisition. From Anchorage to Miami, the country shall be made to kneel, the country shall be made to confess, and the country shall be made whole, pure in mind, body, and spirit, free of all weakness. We will be the best and greatest of all nations, and the equal of none of them. America shall knell before the light of the Lord. Repent, repent, you unholy sinners. And let's keep building ourselves up, because this navy is not going to save itself. So you guys stop doing that. Go ahead and just train. Because these guys actually did relatively okay. We lost quite a few ships here, actually, but, you know, that's alright. Um, I like hurting the penalty size of our enemy, so that's good. And if we need a retreat, that's always good to get to. So, Next event. Oh, actually, good. oh, yeah, I'm going to go to early mobilization. Hope they get some consumer goods. Nope. Okay, then. Did we do anything else here? Nope. St. Mary City. As part of the Region Carol's initiative to facilitate America's transition into a Catholic state, the Holy America League has begun a series of restoration efforts to America's historical sites, ones that related to the legacy of Christian piety in the American spirit. One such site of the major importance to Philip Carroll's initiative is the site of St. Mary City, the original American colony of Catholic settlers along the Chesapeake Bay. It is the first settlement of what would form the country and eventually the state of Maryland and is credited as being the origin point of American values of religious freedom, being the first settlement to establish the mandate of religious practice for both Catholics and Protestants. In the centuries since the American Revolution, St. Mary City now functions as little more than a tourist attraction. The descendants of the original settlers have long since moved on to the more populous regions such as D.C. or Baltimore. Now, with the beginning of Carroll's initiative to reinvigorate the old colony, new construction projects for the development 
development of the city or plan. These are parts of an economic plan based on an obscure syndicalist design development scheme originally intended for the state of Nevada, but now will be initiated in the former Ma Maryland hamlet. The goal will be to utterly transform it into a shining gem in the heart of the mid-Atlantic region, even though the initial estimates placed the project completion as late as 1954. It is becoming clear to many, based on the sheer scale of the endeavor, that Carroll Region is determined to make America into a nation as pious as it is properous, or something to be admired and something more than mantra, and if the plans for St. Mary's City are in any indication, America is likely to go to look a very different in the near future. Idle hands are the devil's plaything. Cool, another military factory which we could use. And there goes Beijing. Integral America, please. Thank you. But man, so many events are killing me off here, but with the Civil War over, the question of what should be the capital for the new America has been brought up. Of the many cities within the country, four are the most promising. Which city would be the chosen capital? I usually choose D.C., but I hate I hate D.C. right now. I like, we, we blew it up, apparently. Like, so, I don't want D.C. I, with that being the seat of the, what was the federal government, and MacArthur just defiantly refusing to die, or just, like, refusing, I'm not going to do that. New Orleans is from where the Kingfish was at, so I don't want to do that one either. Austin or Topeka? Uh, I'm not really sure. Kansas or Austin? I kind of don't mind Austin, just because Texas was always with us. Well, except for this part. Of, no, that's true. Except for this part of Texas. And I don't want to give Texas too much power because the western part of Texas did not side with us in the war. But Kansas has been true and loyal and I we like off land of Soto. Pika, you're the capital. I've never done this before and I'll probably never do it again like this ever again. <laughs> Soundtrack propaganda. Let's go and do that. Um... Uh, we get an event up here. Many farmers live in rural areas and are difficult to reach for recruitment and propaganda, but there's an old campaign tactic in the South and Midwest that can serve us here. Sound trucks will blitter through these areas to gather p potential supporters by telling them of the urgency of our mission, which is good. So we get some more war support because obviously we don't have very good, or it's not very good right now. What do you mean demobilize our economy? I want to go up higher. The great Jesuit missions along the East Coast. With the development of projects in St. Mary's City underway, the Holy American League has begun its process of proselytizing the faith of the Catholic Church to communities along the Eastern Seaboard. The primary leadership of the Church has exerted a great deal of effort in preparing for this. Al Smith is taken to a meeting with the state governors in the Mid-Atlantic to coordinate the efforts to help spread the, go spread the gospel. Dorothy Day and her Catholic worker movement begin campaigning in the factories in every major city along with the East Coast, championing the word of Christ in the workplace. And Charles Coughlin, wild and ir irreverent as ever, has been touring the Carolinas and the Virginias to speak at across the deep south. The clergymen have been whipping up a storm with national southerners in support of the league's mission, and all the while, Philip Carroll has been personally involved with the process, taking cues from Father Cochran and engaging with the people of America over the radio and a series of so-called fireside chats with the common people, serving as a light to Cochran's heat. The demure Marylanders speaking candidly of the world's events and America's role in them, indeed. It is a massive undertaking on the part of the league, but more importantly, it is clear that the very beginning of the effort to legitimize his administration in the eyes of the great, greater general populace, the beginning of a series of conversion efforts, the East Coast, and then working their way westward until the entirety of the continental U.S. from sea to shining sea stands united under the gospel of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and now to roll the dice. Look at that stability, plus 60%. Beautiful. And so the clan has been wiped out, the grand, the major grand dragons, and the followers are either fleeing or arrested in the clan alongside with other NDWL cells have gone utterly underground, practically falling apart of the process. While some of their members are still around, they can no longer cause major damage to our supply or civilian supporters. Very good. Hey, at least we got one thing done. That's good. And now they want to demobilize our economy. Son, Jesus Christ says no. Jesus Christ says not today. Uh, Guadalupeism? Encourage convergence? Black Legion retreat. The Black Legion has been utterly broken with captured members uh, selling one another out. Their funds destroyed and most of the mil militants either dead or in retreat. It appears that the Black Legion has finally been defeated. And the government announced that the Black Legion is in shambles and has been met with celebration with citizens who can return to their lives with far, far less fear in their lives. Justice at last. Uh, let's see. Criminalize the liberalism. Settling the score. Knights of Columbus. Nice. Even more attack, which is finally pretty good. Reward Catholics. Can we still go down this way? We can. The economy will continue to recover. I think it's good to go th this way next, though. The NRA emphasis is emphasizes the use of public domain and work-living units instead of the cutthroat competition of regular contract work. Workers in the NRA will receive the benefits of a minimum wage and the price-controlled work environment in the constant, in constant to keep the old company store model. Not bad, not bad. So, it's still 43. Uh, let's grab some more construction speed. That'll be very good. And ship-wise, we're actually doing really, really well on ships, even though we have no chromium, which is not very good. So, we got one, two, three carriers, one dreadnought. Let's get another dreadnought. Hold on. The pride of the world. Lots of dreadnoughts. Nice. Yeah, we could re what? How do we get another research slot really quickly? Uh, see, we got about less than a week for that. Reconstruction is over. Employment expansion. Conditional forgiveness. Seize treacherous wealth. We'll probably do that one. Public works. 
National Valley Authority, Farm Relief, El Rural Electrification, National Recovery, National Recovery Administration. Oh, there's one. And then to the American Heres Her American His His Heresy. National Recovery Administration, very good. It was a hubris of man that drove God out of the halls of power in the New World, a fear and hatred born from venality, and the arrogance of the signs of British and Spanish rules, whose fear-mongering of the Church drove the founding fathers of our nation to force God out of our constitutional framework. European bigotry and persecutions set the stage for what we now know to be the American heresy, a terrible mark of shame referring to the collective American decadence wrought by the separation of church and state in America. Charles of Carrollton signed his name to the declaration that held the self-evident truth that all men were endowed by the Creator. The impetus that loosed the arrow of American freedom at the heart of the European hegemony. It is here by the proclamation of Charles of Carrollton's proud descendant and disciples, our regent, Philip Acosta Carroll, that the separation of church and state is hereby abolished. All institutions of the continental U.S., from the office of the regent down to the roles of civil services, shall incorporate Christian oaths of service and loyalty upon hiring all hospitals. Fire stations and police departments shall incorporate Catholic priests into the workplace of moral laws and sanctify the civil services with the blessing of Christ. The Roman Catholic Chaplain Corps, a long standing branch of the American military, shall be granted special status within the armed forces. Of function as part of the newly created Office of Christian Commissars. To further boast of the morale of our frontline forces, let this day stand as a testament of the grand redemption of the American spirit, and through our righteous power and willpower, that America shall become unchangeable. From disgrace to am amazing grace, our time has come. Look at that peepee -pee that we don't really need, but that's okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. Shift designer. Do we still only have the same shift designers? I guess we do have to f figure out the companies as well, so that'll be good to do as well. Hmm. A few weeks left for that. It's not great, not bad. Still training a lot of our soldiers, so it is what it is. We've got weeks for this stuff, so. Hmm. Not bad. Infrastructure efforts could be not too bad. State grants. I think I want to be line for the extra research slot. Unless there's one on the far left side of this focus tree here that could get to it, in which we could get to it pretty darn quickly. Reward the Catholics. Catholic education. Cavalier identity. Ethical economics, Catholic unions, uh, criminalize liberalism, promote aristocratic ideals, purge or puppet the or opposition, cremate the clan. Oh, cool. Remove orange menace, common man integralism, blur the lines, America Sanctus. America Sanctus. Yeah, I think I want to go for the edge. The education one here as fast as possible. So, Public Works Administration. The ability to generate electricity, transport water, and ensure safe and efficient travel is lost during the Civil War. However, the Public Works Administration will fix all that as a fund that will ensure contractors pay their employees fairly so that there are better incentive to help rebuild. Cool. Two weeks left. And actually, since we're still at peace, I want to help with maybe the Germans first. I mean, they did send volunteers to other people, but I want to get involved a little bit. Man, Bill III, you're not looking too good. How many divisions could we send? Six, not bad. And I did say I want to defeat the enemies who fought against us, and we will. But I want to make sure that our enemies suffer a lot. And I mean a lot. I want them to, there to be nothing but absolute suffering against the enemy here. So about 300 fighters probably if we have that much, which we probably don't have. Alright, we'll send you guys over to here. Yeah, we're probably going to lose a lot of planes, but hey, that is what it is. God, we need another research slot so badly. Can we get any more... Uh, excuse me, I did send you over, so... Thank you, come again. Uh, bombers, naval bombers, of course. TG flying bombers, nope, that's it. That kind of shocks, not going to lie. Oh, they're breaking through, that's not good. I don't think the Russians helped us out. I think they helped out the car, maybe? They're a national populace. Combat squads, not too bad. They have their own little Eurasian faction, so go figure. Um, and how many more times? Uh, I don't want to do this. Civilian economy, if not, activates the mission. We lose 5% stability. Cool. And public works administration. Good. More civilian factories. Good, 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 good. I wonder if we could reclaim Alaska yet. How strong are divisions? They're looking slightly better. Really not that much better. Yeah, we're actually losing a lot more things. Maybe we'll stop training them for now. Cool. Kind of hanging out. And we should be making hundreds of thousands of guns a day. Or at least hundreds. Maybe. Hopefully. Any other field marshals that we have? No, not really. Could use you guys. I could promote someone else, I suppose, as well. 
There we go, Arnold. Be an offensive guy. Ooh, I want to help out up here. There we go. I mean, that's when you do get some more political power back, but I wonder if we can just switch back over there, too, anyways. Keep going, guys. Keep going. We don't want them Sunnis to win either, but I think they'll do okay. Oh, better. Good, 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 good. I uh, grab some of this. I forget what. Oh, uh, we need subs, too. We need so many things. So many things, you know. Wow, that's really looking not very good. Just, oh, whoa. Guys, it's, it's good to not let him in. Actually, are we building anything with this yet? We s actually slowly are. Not too bad. Could be a lot better, though. Wow, we lost as soon as we got in there, huh? Oh, this is really bad. The Germans are just sucking a fat one right now. Oh, I don't want to do this. Can I move back? We need more war support, which we can't get right now, which sucks. Uh, yeah, this looks really, really bad. Wow, you guys are dummies. Big dum dums. Good. Grab some of this for more defense. And better planes. And there you go. Anything else here? Reclaim America, New England, which we'll do soon enough. Um, we could probably ask for New England. They might be okay with it. They are technically... Canada is a technically at war with the Third International, so... Henry the Ninth. I'm not sure who you are, but... Oh, they're out of manpower. They have to say... Well, New England is actually probably pretty strong because they're traitors to the Republic, so... They're just traitors anyways. We're gonna ask for Alaska first. If they refuse to do it... Okay, there we go. Alaska rejoins America. Canada's return the territory of Alaska back to the Serene Republic of the American Union State. God bless America. Why is it not a core? Why is it not a core? I guess technically it's not a state yet. Why is it not a core? Alright. I'm going to wait for these guys. Because they're pretty strong and our forces don't look super strong over there. It's fine for now though. Hey, Motorized is looking pretty good though. That's pretty nice. I'll spread you around a little bit more. Germany. Why do you suck so much right now? They probably grinded too hard against them. Honestly, screw the lower side. Just help out the upper side here. There you go, that's good. How are you guys losing? They're fighting over a river. They do have air superiority, though, so. Uh, do you have upgrades before you do too much here, Panzer Expert? No, we'll do that one, why not? Do we lose a division? We already lost a division? How? Oh, that's so dumb. You're gonna get, you, know, you know what? Hmm. Hmm. I know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, never choose grand battle plans. Garbage. <laughs> that's probably why, part of the reason why we were losing. Can we actually win here? No, we can't. Yeah. Enemies have absolute air superiority. The Germans were stupid. Because mm, I don't want to do this one yet. Because it seems like if I if they say no, well, I either go to war with Canada and them. And or, uh, we'll have to join the Entente. And I'm not joining the Entente. I'm going to burn the Entente to the ground. I really do not like the Entente at all. Oh, look at that. And they start attacking. At least hold here, if not up here. So I want a lot of dead Russians. How many, how many Russians? Are, how much manpower they have? Oh, they don't have that much manpower left. Oh, if they could do more resistance stuff here, that would actually help them out quite a bit. And then we shall read National Education Administration. In the wake of the collapse of the CSA, the National Education Association has folded and its members have dispersed, with most teachers being apolitical and the union never being able to exert much partisan power over them. It's a strong candidate for rehabilitation by the new American government. Good. Good, good, good. This economy will continue recovering, too. So that's good. I, I press stage. Come on. Oh, what the heck? Uh, I'm pretty sure I said you like 
A lot more than that, but whatever. Ah, oh, Germans. You have big dum dums. Right, so how are we looking over here, anyways? That's looking so much better. Artillery's looking god awful, but the guns are looking so much, so much, so much, so much, so much better. Even support equipment's pretty bad. Hmm. Could be a lot better. A lot, lot better. So, after this one, reconstruction is over, rural electrification, national administration, public works. I hate, I don't, I really don't like how these are 50 days. I mean, it makes sense, but still. Recovering political instability. We get more weekly war support, so I kind of like that, actually. Plus 3%. My popular government, which is not good. Orange Menace, Foreign Lifeline, Liberty Ships, Wade Clan. Uh, we'll probably do this one. Guadalupe is in the next. Because weekly war support is really good. Our Lady of Guadalupe is our patron and must be revered above all but Christ himself. As of today, Guadalupeism is now our official ideology and we shall seek to spread it throughout the Americas. Good. So we have all this going along, but we can't really do it. More cruisers, maybe? We can't trade for these, any of these guys, which really sucks too, so... There goes West Indies Union. Goodbye. Let's go on attack. Oh, he's got a little bit of a thing about him. Biography. Even with anti-air, we can't shoot down enemy planes at all, can we? This anti-air sucks. Assembly line production. We're going for more anti-air, even though it sucks. Yeah, max speed kind of hurts. Mm. There you go. Wow. Germany, I sent six divisions. You keep losing them. The Reds can't do anything. But the Russians can do a whole lot. They should be out of manpower by now. Oh, they may have raised the conscription level. What? I wonder what line after they're going. How do they get 300,000 more manpower? Combat squads? Jesus Christ, that's overpowered. Resistance growth speed minus 100%? Holy cow. I got to play with Russia sometime. Well, Constantinople. Uh, okay. You guys doing stuff down there? Uh, it's almost 1944. So, might as well wait to do that one. Don't worry about attacking, guys. Don't worry about it. Why do you take so long to move? Seriously. Oh, that's garbage. All right, let's get out of here. I'm trying to help these guys out it was a bad idea. Get out, get out, get out. Why are you attacking, son? Please. Okay, I. you saw me give them orders, right? Unless they're capitulating. I don't think the Germans are capitulating, though. God dang, the Germans are just... Big sadness, but they've lasted this long. It's a little surprising. I'm ready for this. Let's let's try to reunite with, the, with New England and the Canadian concern. While the New England government is not a Canadian puppet, it would be false to suggest it wasn't part of the British Empire, as such as it is, and is of great concern to the larger Canadian sphere of interest. The Canadian government is willing to allow New England to reunite with the Serene Republic of the American Union state since the reason for Canada's intervention in the region ended with the Civil War. But with they are asking that the Serena Republic of American Union State join the Entente Alliance, this would make up for the New England's loss and also be a way to pay back the Kingdom of Canada for saving American lives. They did not save American lives. They sent volunteers to fight against us. So to hell with them. To hell with them. Straight to hell. We're going to destroy Canada. They refuse. So, the fall of Berlin. Reunion with New England. Good. Officials from New England delivered the message promptly. They will gladly unite with the Serena Republic of the American Union State at once. The purpose of their provisional government, to avoid the chaos of the Civil War, is now over with. And they look forward to America being whole once again. Good. Good. To hell with them. How dare you dare you recommend that? Why would we ever support Canada? Especially after their, you know, what they wanted to do to us. Kill off good, innocent, hardworking Americans that are incredibly pious. Wow. Wow. Um, let's see. Tanks. I actually have tank divisions. We could use these, maybe. I'll keep you off to the side. Uh, you guys... Mountaineers, huh? Uh, it's not good. Not really that good. Honestly, we've got enough. And actually, by doing this, we save manpower. We're demobilizing some more. Wow. We're really demobilizing a lot more. But that's just help us out with guns. We got enough guns! And artillery, too. Not bad. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Alright, I'll put you over here. 
Yay! And then put you guys over there. So then that is fine. And then you can actually be led by someone more competent. Thank you. Tank commander? Well, we need someone who we can lead the tanks. And you should be led by... Oh, no, you already are the field marshal. Field marshal. Walton Walker. Cool. Not bad. Fourth research slot. Finally. Finally, 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 finally. Air doctrine. Let's keep doing this because since we got it anyway, so... Military factors would be nice. Uh, we're finally making planes. Let's make some more artillery pieces because we need way more. And more of this, too. And naval dockyards. Good. Guadalupeism. Very nice. They had two ships left. Wow, that's pretty bad. There you go. And another carrier. Very good. Guys. Okay, you see this, right? I gave them orders, yet they're refusing to move. <laughs> oh, the garbage. Guys, get out of there. You don't belong in North Africa. Unless you're from North Africa, which they might be, but I kind of doubt it. Do we get more factories? Nope. Mm. Yeah, we definitely got to get this one. Uh, but at least it'll give us weekly war support, which is nice. And we've got the next research slot, which is very, very nice as well. America's United. At long last, America has been united under the Serene Republic of the American Union States banner. The traitors and would-be tyrants have tried to destroy and corrupt the great nation, yet we felt held firm and took control. A question has arisen, however, in these territories which did not initially rise up with Huey Long in the Civil War. Is this country the United States of America, or truly the Serene Republic of the Uni American Union State? There is a longing among many to return to the stability of the stars and stripes, even if things irrevocably change. Should we expease them and show that America Huey original envision still exists? The Serene Republic of the American Union State is America. I don't know why we have all this political power. We can't do anything with it. Like, these guys are okay, but... It's not great. Yeah, this seems... Eh, we're not even building destroyers really too much, so... Reds... The Reds really are not attacking. I, If I were the Reds, I would probably be attacking them. But whatever. Whatever. You guys can come back over here for a little bit more funsies. And do we have planes here? I thought we did send some planes, yeah. That's going to help us get our air doctrine done even quicker. Yeah, that's pretty overpowered. Minus 100% resistance. I mean, that's got to really just take out, like, a ton of your own manpower if you're going to have that. So, at least in my opinion, but what do I know? War Heroes being killed. Well, weekly change minus 5%. Why? Weekly change? Oh, my goodness. Encourage conversions? Well, I guess we'll do this one next. We'll get more war support then. Encourage conversions. America is a majority Protestant nation. There's no getting around that fact. And while the church forbids a forceful conversion of anyone, the League has a plan. By introducing higher wages for non-Catholics and giving Catholics breaks or tax breaks, we will no doubt be able to bring even more people to the fullness of the truth found in the church. Just follow the money. I kind of doubt we could actually win here if you help them out. So, yeah. Hang out and hold. One division is literally attacking us, and we lost. How? What? Look at that. And, you know, I'm going to be honest here. Like, the American Union state is too weak. It's incredibly weak or something. I'm not sure what's happening anymore in this campaign. Oh, we got some of that. Uh, we can't do this anymore, but whatever. Are we at least building something? Barely? At least we're building. Barely, though. Guadalupeism is nice and all, but... Alright, so at this point in the campaign, I'm just going to delete, like, a ton of divisions or something like that. Whenever, whoever's won, whoever's at peace, I'm just going to delete the divisions. Just because it's getting incredibly laggy. And even after I upgraded my CPU, it's incredibly laggy. Uh, let's take a look at the factions. Maybe that'll help me determine. Um, I might just, like, put all the Third International in South America under, like, Brazil. Maybe? That's weird when Austria-Hungary is in... The, uh, don't know Adria Bund, but okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. I might take out Japan, maybe? Oh, they're in the Moscow Accord? Wow, that sucks. Sucks to be them. Russia. Just, why did you stop attacking? You wanted to attack so badly. Uh, that was by John. Earl Camp Long, huh? Hmm. I don't know. But I'm not sure who to take out to, like, unify. 
just so we can speed this up a little bit more because my goodness it's pretty bad it is really darn bad yeah, artillery though that's good could use more resources too want to get help out over there and get in circle probably there we go finally and encourage conversions cool yep as soon as you get over there you lose my goodness my my goodness Oh, we're almost maxed out on uh that stuff. That's not bad. Air XP. Pretty darn nice. Come on, we can't even build. God dang it. And after this one, blur the lines. Um, hmm. Weekly war support still goes up, but after this one, we get plus three, two percent more weekly war support. It's currently so we don't get any more weekly war support then. Not sure if I can really agree with that. Right, it's almost 44. Artillery is almost done. This stuff is almost done. Uh, look at this research speed. Or no, we already got the research speed. We don't need that yet. Air doctrine still coming along. Naval stuff could be really good. Look, maybe we could grab some subs, maybe. Brian Potter. All right. Up, up, down. Resistance. Where? Spices like there are fine. Still not building though. So where do we get more war support? Uh, we'll strike the legion. Man, it sucks not being able to get more war support. Ooh, rebuild urban housings. We could probably do that one. <sighs> hmm. Rebuild urban housing. The civil war has blasted the country to pieces. Large parts of rural country are not but mud and ashes. Well, countless cities have been redulced or smoldering rubble. We shall set to work developing new housing and infrastructure as soon as possible. So after this. Once we get the next focus, I think I'll just end the episode and start pushing ahead to do more focuses off screen. So, I think that'll be planned. Just because this is taking too long, and I, and I gotta delete a lot of divisions here. So, it's just too laggy. Too laggy for me. How many divisions does Russia actually have? Cossack armed forces? Yeah. That's so many divisions. Ukraine? Not that many. Austria is pretty sad. China? I can't wait till China's united and then their stuff is over. Just so that I can delete other divisions. Japan is there. Ooh, well, I'll we'll go with this first fighting. That'd be good. Dominion of Delhi. Oh, well, once India's united too, then we could probably delete some of their divisions as well. As much as I don't want to do the influence stuff like this, I think we're going to have to. Oh, look, we got pushed out. Man, Germany soldiers sucks. Maybe play Germany and Kaiser Redux. See what they're like sometime. Because look at that. It's so slow. It's so incredibly laggy. I mean, I get that's why Kaiser Reich like implemented this maximum supported divisions, but still. Oh, look at that! Factory output goes down. We currently have exceeded our capacity, and the only way to alleviate this stress on our country would be to remove some of the divisions, which I think is a mistake for the player country. I really don't care if like, you know, other divisions or other countries are affected by that, but for ourselves. Wait, why do we? Have, what the heck is this? Du Li Bo Bing Li Lu? What the heck? Why do we have Chinese divisions here? Um, okay, well, whatever. I don't remember having those, but okay. I mean, we have these medium armor divisions, which makes sense, but... Questioning that quite a bit. Alright. Engineers. Artillery. We're gonna make some light tanks eventually. Logistics, very good, very good. Keep them there for now. Um... Hmm... Yeah, I, I still don't like this, though. I, I think it's a big waste, and it just hurts the player instead of any, of it, instead of anyone else, so. I would like to see that removed, but that's just me. Anything over here? Uh, Muzzle, yes. Get more with the worst part. Encourage conversions. And we'll do new urban housing. Uh, I think we already read this one, so the Civil War's blasted our country to pieces. Large parts of the rural country might be not in, but mud and ashes, while countless cities have been reduced to smoldering rubble. We shall set to work developing new housing and infrastructure as soon as possible. But at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on this because we can. But I'm going to read a couple other focuses so that we can do it off screen. The National Public Works. As a nation, America lost a great deal of its labor supply to fighting poverty in re of recent years. The leader has been pushing an executive order authorizing the creation of an agency to employ manual labor to fill out the spaces and employment for NRA projects. National Valley Authority. The damage done to America by the Civil War has been considerable, and even approaching the idea of reconstruction seems like an insurmountable problem. An idea has been floating around the capital of establishing a public body to oversee not only the reconstruction effort, but looking at how to rebuild a better America once that the project is completed. 
farm relief. Farmers are the basis of the American economy, but they have seen devastation wrought from the Civil War. Only through a combination of direct farm aid via a lump cash payouts to compensate for damaged equipment, purchasing farm equipment, contracting industrial areas to build capital instruments for farming, can we help begin the recovery. Rural electrification, the electricity network throughout the country has regressed to that of the 1910s. This is un-American. We need to ensure that our constituents can be properly informed about our nation's glory. Further, electrification will give our rural areas access to much-needed elect electricity. And we can do conditional forgiveness, but I'm not going to forgive anybody here for their treachery, but seize treacherous wealth. Congress has sided with us in condemning these companies that betrayed the American people. Lists of majority shareholders and traders' companies have been seized, and the executive officers of the companies that have exploited workers behind the facade of government are now on trial. And employment expansion. We will continue to help our workforce to get back on its feet. With the new housing infrastructure being built, unemployment has significantly gone down, and our economy has almost recovered from the Civil War. Uh, the Grand Army of the Republic. An organization from the first American Civil War intended to rep represent veterans. The organization on its last legs due to few veterans still surviving. However, we can revive the organization by having recent ACW vets join, giving them an association or society with internal aid. Organization, a means of easily communicating their interests while providing us with new allies, recognized philanthropists. While well, many members of the wealthy oppose the AUS's uh, efforts to redistribute goods, even within a capitalist economy, there are some who remain neutral in the debate. We should speak to them about donating to charity or award them medals for doing so, so they may set an example for others with the means to donate. Dependent and Disability Act. Based on the older Civil War Act, the GAR is pushing for us to revive the Independent and Disability Act, which will provide federal pension aid for disabled veterans and widows of dead veterans. This is a necessary reinvestment to those who are most dependent on us, which will prevent them from falling into poverty. Uh, Department of Public Safety. The Department of Public Safety will not only provide jobs to potential government workers, but help regulate industry and consumer products to be safer, rewarding those who best comply with the tax breaks. We will do our best to cut down on these ac work accidents. And then veteran work programs. Veterans are still out of work partly due to their lack of opportunity. Our work programs will train veterans so that they may better enter the job market and subsidize those markets. Veterans should live a life of dignity, not poverty. Infrastructure efforts. Technology is rapidly changing the world. The automobile is becoming the main mode of transportation for many people. And we must adjust accordingly. Let us build up our roads and bridges to handle this new demand and create a national highway system. And state grants. Sometimes local officials know the best place to spend their resources. State grants will entrust governors and state governments loyal to a republic and with how they decide to rebuild the industries that best suit them and who Needs the most support, and Reconstruction is over. The course of Reconstruction has been revealed the true ideological basis for why Hoover was unable to fix the economy. The wise and constituents of these windbags have largely voted them out by now, as their GDP rises and the American standard of living rises and even exceeds pre-war levels. And just in case, I'm going to go ahead and let's see, you can read about this one. I'll do this one, we're going to do this one together in the next episode, but I want to at least do one of these as well. Now to Columbus, McCabe plan, and eh, this is stuff is okay. Distributism is not bad too. Most do it not to Columbus. By militarizing the Catholic group known as the Nazi Columbus, we will not only have a loyal paramilitary on our side, but a force that we can expand using the secret police against the enemies of Christ the King. But that's going to end us here for today. Tomorrow's episode, we will see probably a Cold War between the Third International and the Russian uh, Eurasian bloc, or the Moscow Accord. So, even if you enjoyed, well, if you got through my rants from the earlier part of this campaign, or this video, or even this campaign, please consider leaving a like. It helps me out. It really does. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will have an America in a much better position. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.